even a foreign language cannot be used by a country to develop. And you are speaking English right now. But that is the issue. That is the product of our education system. If I speak my native language, mm. the African, other Africans will not understand it. Mm. That is the disconnection that exists. I speak four different languages. Mm. But if I speak those languages, I can only communicate with people in West Africa. So are you saying that we can be able to develop with that kind of ethnic diversity, difference in languages? They what we used to communicate are we heading back to sure. side language in butter trade back in the days no but i think you understand? know we we live in a very advanced world mm. whereby educa english that we are speaking today is not a traditional language in in in, 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 uh, in africa mm. it was introduced programmed with strategies to some extent we all adapted can't we do the same or is there anything that exists as these are the people who knows it all and they do it they do it all and some individuals don't and they cannot do it swahili for instance there is a progress in east africa where so many countries now have adopted it as official language it has been taught in schools you know and that is empowering the young people in believing in a language language is very important a chinese can become a doctor without being able to speak English and French. And that is not possible for a Nigerian, not possible for even a Rwandan, not even possible for a Gambian. That is the wrong that we are talking about in the education system. So we have to be able to produce individuals with skills, with knowledge, with everything, relying on our realities. And that in the first step in that is changing or designing the curriculum that fits the African purpose. With African languages, mm. that can be generalized within the continent, where people try to embrace them bit by bit. But without that, our call can never be realized. Very true. Do we see some success stories in Africa? Sure, there are. We just talked about Rwanda, for instance. We, we have seen what is going on in Mauritius. We have seen other countries like in Kenya. We have seen countries like in South Africa and etc. Even though if you analyze most of them in debt, you come to realize that they also have like few lapses in some of their models and etc. Some of them are still trapped with foreign aid, with, de with, with, with debts, mm. loans, you know, from Britain Wood institutions like the IMF, the World Bank. We've seen recently how Chinese are using their financial, you know, you know, strength mm. to more of recolonize African countries, you know, as a result of the little finance that they're giving us, using paper money in exchange with our valuable resources. You know, but we have these problems, but it doesn't mean that we can't fix it. Mm -hmm. We can fix it. We just have to look inward. We have to start looking down because relying on the West mm. has not solved the problem. And Gavi said one thing that was very important. Mm. Any leadership that teaches you to rely on another race for survival, that leadership will enslave you. Osman, we've been reading this great book with you, mm -hmm. The Post Development Reader. Yeah and present something like a mainstream media propaganda. Mm -hmm. I just support that. Yeah, um, thank you so much. I think that is the work of uh, Majid and Victoria, which is a yes. very good work uh, in, in, in development studies. But basically, if you look at the mainstream media, it, it operates in a way that way before the publication of this very book, in, in, in fact, it has ever been there. Mm. And that is the beauty of academic because they can only, they can always look into, you know, things that happen in our societies and come up with solution to it. Mm. I will recommend every development student to automatically visit this very literature. Now, um, looking at the mainstream media, we have been portrayed as a continent in a way that we like there is no life in this continent the continent is not developing it is look at as you know a continent that only has poverty in it these are the images shown by the outside world about africa and this image must change it's mo it must change in a way that if an image mm. portrays poverty it doesn't attract investors to come africa must have an image that attracts investment mm. not foreign investment but investment by africans themselves we have so many individuals living in the diaspora and that is why i always make this call mm. 
Africa is the future for investment, but Africans have to take the lead in it. And I'm saying this because if you look at the mainstream media today, we have millions of people living in the streets of America mm. as homeless. They do not see, want us to see that. They don't want us to see poverty existing in European countries. We've seen how Britain is. We've seen, you know, how Italy is. We've seen how some of these countries are. You know, they have their own issues that they find it difficult to solve among themselves. Just one example. Look at how the Ebola epidemic was portrayed and Africans were portrayed during this crisis or during this disease outbreak. Mm. And what happened when the COVID was killing people in the Western world? Mm. These images were not shown. So that is why it's high time for us as Africans to develop media outlets among ourselves mm. and medias that are not in line with our principles, with our agendas. We have to kick them out of the continent. It's either they be neutral and so the beautiful part of the continent as well, mm. or else they stay in their own countries. That is the fact. But we cannot just be here and being portrayed in a way that, you know, as if there is no life. Mm. So they have to be neutral. And if you look at this very book, you will understand how media has a role to play in balancing power at the international level. That is why you see all these so-called superpowers have a media outlet that propagates their own agendas, even though sometimes they are built on, you know, promises that are not even materialistic. Mm. So we must be aware of this. And the mainstream media have been the cause of most of the problems in Africa. They portray the Western world as if everything there is perfect. <laughs> Brainwashing the youth who doesn't have time to look in depth as to what is happening. Mm. And therefore we have seen Africans dying in the Mediterranean Sea. We have seen Africans dying in refugee camps in Europe. Mm. We have seen Africans being sent to prisons. Innocent people treated differently just because they are in different continent or just because of the color of their skin. So all these things are happening because of the mainstream media. So we must be aware of it now. Develop media outlets and build up a network among themselves and they have the African agenda forward. Oh. Then Africa can have a single voice. A single voice for Africa. So, um, Africa 24 is indeed a great media. Um, I think uh, those are some of the individuals that we really need to empower and uh, making sure that African invest in media outlets like this mm. so that they can have the opportunity to extend their channels across the continent and even beyond the continent mm. to make sure that Africans are informed with the best things happening in the continent as well. Mm. But if we don't know what is happening, we find it difficult to embrace it. So media is very important. It is one of those most important instrument that you can use to change a society. Mm. Because the first step in realizing a development model or a development agenda is through communication. And communication has to be built in a way that is, it is persuasive in nature, whereby it can ignite the spirit of participation, mm. the spirit of responsibility in an individual, for them to take up visions as collective in a particular society to make change. So media outlets owned by Africans in the continent must be empowered to support the African agenda. <laughs>